So it's been a big week in the in the Microsoft world as it relates to chat GPT. Um, you know, it's been basically all the rage. The first and foremost has been the $10 billion proposed acquisition, which I think would make um, Microsoft like a 49% stakeholder in chat GPT. Um, some monumental valuation. But of course, anybody that's tried it has realized that, holy cow, holy cow crow, <laughs> We have technology now that actually does the things that we've long been threatening, like writing our essays for us and doing it in a way that's actually meaningful. And by the way, uh, something our friends on the All In podcast suggested, I don't want to take credit for this, but the possibility to, to deliver a technology that could actually disrupt search, as we know it, in a meaningful way. And anybody that's followed the Bing Google uh, evolution knows that uh, Microsoft has never quite finished figured out how to play the game that Google has in search. Now, um, there's kind of two themes here. And, you know, the main theme is if you look at Microsoft's portfolio from devices to Azure to enter enterprise and apps to gaming, the ability to take a technology like uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT and embed it across every part of your portfolio, productivity, collaboration, uh, dynamics, applications, doing some you know, built-in on-device AI on Surface, uh, what a powerhouse of technology and tools that the company could use to absolutely differentiate itself from every other platform, including Apple, who's, um, you know, Siri, you still suck, um, mostly. So very interesting. I mean, look, this isn't the first thing. I mean, the partnership with Microsoft and OpenAI goes back, I think, three or four years. Um, you know, the company's been very busy working on things like uh, uh conversational AI, they made, uh, they bought GitHub, which is, you know, obviously a platform uh, for developers and coders, and that gave the company more leverage to implement and utilize uh, code that could add AI. But basically now in January of 23, the company is announcing uh, open a Azure OpenAI service and making it gener generally available uh, for OpenAI and ChatGPT coming soon. So effectively what you're seeing with OpenAI and ChatGPT is going to be able to be overlaid on everything that Microsoft builds. Um, what an absolute powerhouse. Um, secondarily, like I said, uh, this to me, Pat, was the number one thing. And I'm not going to take too much out of this one. We could talk forever. I'm just going to say the second I heard this idea of Microsoft being able to use OpenAI and ChatGPT to enable Bing to finally offer a search that could compete with Google or some sort of service absolutely blew my mind because only about one out of a hundred times that I'm searching something on Google, am I looking to buy something yet? The entire e architecture of chat, uh, sorry, of, of, of search has been built to basically enable someone to sell you something. So when you search for, you know, I want more information about um, a company's new product, I get ads fed to me, right? I get something that they want me to click on and they want to, you know, create revenue. But when you use OpenAI and ChatGPT and you search something, you put in a question like, hey, how does um, Intel's Gen 3 versus Gen 2 compare on, uh, on server chips? And you would actually get a somewhat sophisticated breakdown of all the internets, all the material that's been fed to, to this thing that could give you a meaningful answer. I mean, you have questions being asked that could write history papers, doctorals, you have things that could be answering um, I mean, just yesterday, Pat, uh, just as a little example here, I uh, did a search out on the um, summarizing Google and Microsoft announcements at NRF. So this could interestingly feed what we're going to talk about next. And um, I said, uh, it said to me, I'll just read this out. At NRF 2023, Microsoft and Google made product announcements that will have an impact on the retail industry. Microsoft announced its new Azure AI for retail platform, which helps retailers create personalized shopping experiences for consumers. The platform uses AI to analyze consumer data and predict what shoppers want to buy in order to give them better recommendations. Microsoft's new retail strategy is based on three pillars. I'm going to end after this, but personalization, convenience, and security. The company also introduced a new suite of tools called Microsoft 365 for retail, which includes features like inventory management and analytics software. I mean, my gosh, Pat. One question in and we got something back that generally speaking, an analyst or someone on our team would spend some time researching, reviewing, being briefed to get an eye on our arms around. 
the implications of this are massive. And the fact that Microsoft is getting there first um, is going to absolutely put the industry on notice. Amazon, Google, Apple, they're all going to have to find their version of this killer app to try to stay to keep up if Microsoft effectively is able to execute with this technology. So I feel like I've got a different perspective, not from you, uh, but I'm looking, I'm looking at this LLM opportunity through the lens of a business perspective. And that business perspective is kind of twofold, which is, and I brought this up before on here, but I think it's important, which is first off, if you're going to try to do a knockoff of Google search, you better be prepared to be blocked um, by the scrapers that, that come in if you don't link back to where you found the data and be prepared to be sued if you just rip off the information uh, publicly. So we've seen this time and time again, and the value, the reason that you allow crawlers to come and, and search your site and you don't block Google is because you want people to be to find you and you want them to link back uh, to your place. I think there, I, I'm really interested to see on its, on what it does on data sets that aren't public. So for instance, um, you know, law books or, or something like that, something that has a copyright to it. That's where I think we, we could see some, uh, some serious uh, game changing. Second question I have is on cost. Um, I'm very interested to see, by the way, the L and LLM is large. Okay. <laughs> and large means expensive. I mean, with hundreds and thousands of GPUs that have to be intelligently working at the same time. Now, the amount of resources it takes is based on how difficult the question that you, you, you ask it. Um, but we don't yet really know the cost of a transaction. I'll call it a transaction or, or a search. Google search is very efficient and in the way that they've, they've done it. So I'm not certain about the cost and the longevity of it, meaning do the costs go down over time or is this going to be just, you know, the, the Rolls Royce of, of capabilities? And I also question on, is it really a capability that Google doesn't have? Um, I think we've heard some rumblings of, you know, they have been working on a project for close to a decade that, um, uh, yeah, it, exactly. Um, it operates a little bit differently than open API, but it is an, an LL, LLM. Um, and I, I think it's, and by the way, nothing I'm saying takes anything away from Microsoft and Azure. But my question about that is what is the long-term competitive advantage that Azure has using chat GPT? Like you said, there are, I agree that wouldn't it be interesting if Microsoft connected some things on the operating system and the PC platform and all of the AI that, uh, that they're driving to, to the PC desktop, that's something that competitively Apple just can't do and they've sucked at it for eons don't get me wrong apple's good on device level ai but it's horrible on it as it as it relates to the cloud so i think chat gpt is cool um even though it got you know <clears throat> the companies that i worked for that were wrong uh when, when i i queried on it doesn't mean i'm going to throw it out but i still have questions on on its cost it's unassailable moat that uh, that it has. Uh, congratulations to Azure being first on it. I think when it starts crunching on some private data sources, things will really get interesting. Well, I also think the ability for companies to bring in proprietary data and then use any of these, but especially as good as, because obviously I was spilling a lot of the 
scraping of public information. You brought up a great point about the legal ramifications, copyright issues of people using the data. Um, you know, obviously search has had a way of getting around copyright for a long time in terms of sharing and making it available. And that's largely because people want the data to be found <laughs> online. Um, but so there are going to be a lot of things to work out, but in large language models, when you have companies that have tons and tons of proprietary customer data, tons and tons of, of, uh, experiential data of data sets from experiments or, for, you know, that stuff's going to be unique when you can combine it with the public domain to provide differentiation, but you can't take it away, Pat. This thing can literally write a, a PhD essay for you, which doesn't make it not cheating. But the real question that I believe needs to be asked is what are the ramifications to the future when you don't need to actually learn these things in order for it to like, you can't not, you can't leave the education, uh, you know, the institution of, of higher ed in place when someone can just search a question and have it right of a comprehensive dissertation. This is a beginning of an, a fundamental change in human behavior and humanity yeah. and the way we will work, the way we will study, the way we will learn. It's been happening right under our noses, but this may be one of those moments where it's become incredibly evident that everybody is going to be affected by it. 